chapter 28, very close to the, to the end now, and the final part of our story, our three characters have released their magic, Zan with his gingerbread butterflies, Phoebe with her getting the giants to come and bring the townspeople of Beam all those good things, and finally Bathsheba who'd cut the guy ropes at the Grand Duchess's ball to make all the tents fall on the rats, and she'd given that flute to somebody who we don't know who. I wonder what's going to happen there. This picture that this one starts with might give us a bit of a clue. And this chapter is called The Piper and the Clockmaker. The Piper stepped out from the tower and walked down the palace steps. His clothes were faded, a patchwork of different shades of white and his long sleeves frayed. The peaked hat crumpled and adorned with a white feather. He held the glowing flute to his lips and played. The scritch scratching of claws on stone could be heard as the Pied Piper walked through the palace gardens and through the gates. A throng of rats scampered on all fours around his heels. He walked slowly, steadily, pausing only to tip his hat to the tearful Grand Duchess, gazing after him from the steps, and surrounded by her astonished courtiers and palace guards, who looked very relieved. The piper played as he walked through the streets of Troutwine, sewer grills popping up all behind him. As mesmerised rats scrambled after him, their whiskers quivering, Waistcoats, catapults, spikes and chains were tossed aside as the rats seemed to shrink in size and returned to their sleek, sinuous selves. The piper's eyes wrinkled in happiness as they left Troutwine and headed south towards the tumble downs. All over the city, people gathered to collect the discarded objects and marvel at the rats' departure. Few noticed the cats gathered on the rooftops, hats pulled down and shoulders hunched as they conversed in low voices. Hmm, do you think the elves will be returning? Too early to say. There's a picture there of the rats scampering. After the Pied Piper who'd le led them out of Troutwine. Zam looked back and felt a shiver of alarm run through him. The copper-coloured beetles were breaking from the swarm and hunting down the fluttering gingerbread butterflies that his runcible spoon had brought to life. The beautiful flying biscuits were being nibbled to bits by hundreds of glowing-eyed beetles. The butterflies crumbled under attack and splintered into crumbs, each one swallowed by the greedy mechanical insects. But nothing happened. The plan hadn't worked. Zam turned away and buried his face in the cloud horse's mane. Below, the steady tramp, tramp, tramp of marching tin men echoed round Clock Tower Square. From the balcony, the clockmaker raised his fist. Now, my beetles, keeper of my clocks, will bring you and your horse back down to earth, he promised. As the cloud horse flew back round the square, Zam looked up and braced himself for the beetles to attack. The swarm finished the last of the gingerbread butterflies and gathered in an on ominous cloud and sped straight towards him. Suddenly, bright flashes like bolts of lightning spread through the swarm, followed by a pop, pop, pop sound as the beetles began to explode. Tiny pieces of cogs and springs and whirring wings fell to the square below, leaving smoky trails. The air filled with the spiced smell of ginger as the swarm of mechanical insects disintegrated before Zam's eyes. No! screamed the clockmaker, staggering back from the palace, into him, back from the palace balcony into his palace. Who will wind my tin men now? And in the square below, the steady tramp of the marching tin men had begun to slow and die as they wound down. The crowd began to murmur and then break through the cordon of ropes that contained them as the tin men ground to a halt. With no beetles to wind them up, the tin men were stationary targets, and the crowd seized axes from the frozen mechanical fingers and began to chop them up. The sounds of clanging and flashes of sparks followed Zam as the cloud horse rose high in the air and flew them both back towards the north. So 
So there we've heard the Pied Piper has led the rats out of trout wine. Zam has used his butterflies to destroy the beetles who, are, who can no longer wind up the tin men. And then they've begun to stop and the crowds have hacked them apart with their axes. Wonder what's going to happen next.